Ah, I love Nitro Gold Brew Coffee. It's so good. But I hate paying five bucks for it at Starbucks. So I got a home brew kit so I can make it myself right here at home. But did it make sense for me to do it this way? Let's talk about it. This is the 64 ounce size of the Royal Brew Nitro Cold Brew Coffee Maker Home Keg Kit in matte flat black. Well, that was a mouthful. It basically allows you to create your own Nitro Cold Brew coffee at home for the entry price of about 150 bucks. Now, I was gonna say easily make, but it really depends on how you go about doing it because not only do you need the kit, but you need the cold brew coffee, you need to make it or buy some, and you also need to get the gas cartridges that go in here that turn the coffee into nitro coffee. The quick and easy way to make nitro cold brew coffee is to go out and buy some pre-made cold brew coffee, put 40 to 48 ounces in this 64 ounce keg, put in a whipped cream charger, screw that all the way down, shake it around for about 20 seconds, put it in your fridge for an hour and boom, You've got nitro cold brew coffee coming out of the tap. By the way, that's the quick and easy method, but certainly not the cheapest because you're basically paying someone else to make the cold brew coffee that you're putting in there for you. You could still cut costs considerably by making it yourself. It's really easy. Let me show you how I do it. I put seven ounces of Starbucks breakfast blend ground coffee, a light blend that we normally use for our drip coffee maker, into this reusable bag called a coffee sock. I tie the top up, drop it into a mason jar filled with filtered water from my fridge, Put it in the fridge for at least eight hours. I usually actually do it for about 20 hours, just like Starbucks does. And then I've got my cold brew concentrate. So then I'll keep this jar in the fridge until it's time to make my nitro cold brew coffee. At that time, I'll add enough water to make 48 fluid ounces because this is concentrate. You don't really wanna drink this, it's kind of dark, so you need to dilute it. So I'll have my full 48 ounces of cold brew coffee, which I can then pour into a glass and drink it, put it over ice, or pour it into this guy to make nitro cold brew coffee. So basically you're out the cost of your ground coffee and a little bit of time to wait eight hours to 20 hours like I do for it to brew and turn into this. On a side note, even though this keg holds 64 ounces, you need to leave enough space in there for the gas to enter and for it to foam up. So they recommend only filling it 60 to 75% of the keg's capacity with your cold brew. Now that's the inexpensive way of doing this because those whipped cream gas chargers, this box of 24, they average about 60 cents each, and you're only gonna need one of them for this 64 ounce keg of nitro cold brew coffee, and they're readily available just about everywhere. That's gonna net you four 16 ounce pints, or in Starbucks terminology, four grandes. But is that the way that coffee houses and Starbucks make their nitro cold brew coffee? Well, kinda. There's a reason why they charge five bucks for this. Now, while I don't know their exact recipe for their nitro cold brew coffee, here's what I do know about it. They use a dark roast steeped for about 20 hours in a toddy brewer, and they don't use whipped cream cartridges or N2O. Instead, they use N2 cartridges, which are more expensive and give you a better nitro cold brew foam. Now let me briefly explain the differences. I promise not to go into too much detail. I'm no scientist. The N2O cartridge on the left is nitrous oxide. That's the stuff that I've been showing you up to this point. Yes, this is the same stuff that's used in high performance vehicles to give it a quick shot of boost. And it's also called laughing gas used during dental work. It's easy to get because it's used for whipped cream chargers. It's also inexpensive at about 60 cents per eight gram cartridge. The N2 cartridge on the right is nitrogen. It's what makes up about 78% of the Earth's atmosphere. With these, you have to use two of these two gram cartridges instead of one, like the N2O. And they're also more expensive, about $1 each. It's a significant difference of 60 cents per keg versus two bucks. Also, with the N2 nitrogen cartridge, you have to wait 20 to 30 minutes after adding the first cartridge to allow enough time for the gas to absorb before adding the second one. Well, now you have a better idea as to why coffee houses charge a little bit more for their nitro cold brew coffee. It all has to do with the type of gas and of course, the Starbucks tax. Now the other big differences between the N2 cartridges, the nitrogen and the N2O is that the N2 cartridges are not just more expensive, but they're also really hard to find. 
I could only find one place locally that sold them and they were 2.4 grams each, not two. So they were a little bit fatter and they wouldn't fit into the cartridge holder so I couldn't even end up using them. Even at Amazon, there are only a few sellers and they don't even ship very quickly either. So the end result of using nitrogen gas versus nitrous oxide gas is you get that nice creamy texture with the nitrogen versus a glass of foam using the nitrous oxide. Now, don't get me wrong because both work great for nitro cold brew coffee. So it's just a matter of price versus your expectations. And I highly recommend that you try both types of gas out to see which one that you like better. For me, I do prefer the nitrogen better, but there's a cost issue. So I'm probably gonna stick with the nitrous oxide so that it's a little bit more special too when I go out to Starbucks and I do pay five bucks for their version of it. Now, while we're on the topic of gas, it's generally recommended that when you pour a glass of nitro cold brew coffee, that you pour it straight down into the glass to create more foam. Now, I recommend this if you're using nitrogen gas, but not the nitrous oxide because the nitrous oxide gas creates so much more foam. So instead, pour the cheaper gassed up version of your nitro cold brew like a beer at an angle. It'll help a little. So that's what's required to make your own nitro cold brew coffee at home and the big differences between the two types of gases that you can use for it. So now let's take a closer look at the actual kit, the Royal Brew Nitro Cold Brew Coffee Maker System Kit thing in matte black. It comes with everything that you need, including the mini keg, spear, and a faucet. All of those are stainless steel and they're very well made, high quality, and very heavy. Now this is needed because when the gas is inside, it creates a pressurized environment and you don't want weak parts or it's gonna leak. You also get a black plastic tap handle, which you could replace with something else if you really wanted, the cartridge holder, five silicon tubes, a wrench, and two brushes for the keg and the faucet. Assembly is straightforward and easy. I'm not gonna go into huge detail here, but you just screw everything together. For the faucet, be sure to use the wrench to tighten it down good. Cleaning is also easy, just hand wash everything. It comes with an instruction guide that's very easy to understand. So to answer my question that I posed at the very top of this video, did it make sense for me to get one of these? The short answer is yes. Yes, it does take some effort to make it, but it's also quite a bit of effort to go all the way down to my Starbucks to pay a premium price for a nitro cold brew coffee. Plus you get four grandes out of this thing. Now, I actually did that earlier today, just as a reminder of how it tastes and looks. Now, just like the Royal Brew, you get a full glass of nitro cream that after a few minutes ends up turning into about a half inch or maybe a little bit less than that of cream right up at the top. Making it at home this way, I spend under a buck if I use the whipped cream cartridges, the N2O, or a little bit more than $2 if I use the N2 nitrogen cartridges, but I get four glasses out of it. So I take it out of the fridge, I shake it up, I pour a glass, I just put it back in the fridge. I've got three more. Now I have nothing but good things to say about the Royal Brew Nitro Cold Brew Coffee Maker. This thing ships quickly. It's built like a tank. I mean, really, it's gonna last you a lifetime. Now there's a lot of knockoffs out there that copied this design that they came up with a long time ago. So if you're gonna get one, time-tested one, get the original Royal Brew. I've got a link down in the description. And if you have any questions about it, please ask down below. I'd be happy to help or I'll ask these guys and get an answer for you. And as always, thanks for watching and subscribing. I'll catch you in the next one.